Hello and welcome back. I have a treat for you today. This is the Apple Hard Disk 20 SC, a 20 megabyte hard drive from 1986. This is Apple's first SCSI hard drive. It was intended for use with the Mac Plus, which had come out that same year, and they also had a SCSI card that you could put in the Apple II series of computers and use it there as well. So, just for fun, to compare where we've been and where we are now, I'm going to show you this little micro SD card that I pulled out of my son's Nintendo Switch. It's uh, 64 gigabytes, but they actually make this up to one terabyte now. So let's just pretend in the same size and form factor. So let's just pretend this is a one terabyte one. And you can get these for about $300 on Amazon when they're on sale. And this 20 megabyte hard drive in today's money would have been about $3,000. So for one-tenth of the price, you can get something that has 50,000 times more storage on it. Now, to be fair, the hard drive does not take up all of this case. Some of this on this side is the power supply. But you'd need the entire mechanism to hook it up to your Mac at the time. So to be fair, I wouldn't be able to put that micro SD card directly in my iMac. I would have to put it into this little adapter here. So to, if you'll pardon the pun, to compare apples to apples, I'll put those two next to each other. So let's take a look at the back of this device. Now, Apple's owner's guide for this mentions that you should treat it like moving a turntable when you have to move it around. I haven't moved a turntable in decades, but I think I remember how to do it. And this is the back, and these have the older SCSI 1 ports on them. They're bigger than the SCSI 2 ports that we had on the Orb drive and the Jazz drive in my last couple of videos. Down here is the SCSI ID um, selector, and I've set that for zero. If you saw my last video, I talked about supposedly the USB adapter needed the SCSI adapter to be set on zero for Macs, but actually it's for, true for any computer. I've tested that, so um, that was kind of erroneous what I read. It, it just needs to be on zero, period. And I've already set that to zero. And the SCSI to USB adapter is SCSI 2, the smaller 50 pin connector. So we're going to have to put an adapter on that as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is, like I talked about on the last video, is the SCSI in and out. So you could daisy chain up to seven devices on this. So you'd put one going to your computer and then this you could hook up your next device here. Now in the old days with SCSI 1, you need to put a terminator on the last device on your chain. Now what's a terminator? Well, it's basically just a fancy resistor that reduces electrical interference. So I'm going to go ahead and put the terminator on here. Now on the newer devices like the Orb Drive and the Jazz Drive, they had self-termination, so that kind of wasn't a thing anymore by the late 90s, but back, back in these days you had to put a terminator on to reduce the electrical interference. And up here is the older SCSI 1 connector I talked about. And right here is just a little adapter that's going to give us the SCSI 2 adapter so that we can plug in the USB adapter. So I'm going to get all of this set up and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. I've got everything hooked up. The iPhone is in an Apple dock, and in the back of that is the USB to Lightning adapter, and that's plugged into the SCSI to USB adapter. So let's turn this on and see if the Hard Disk 20 SC works with the iPhone. Hey Siri, fire up the old hard drive. You got it, boss. Now the first thing I noticed when I got this hard disk in and plugged into my iMac was it takes three minutes and 30 seconds exactly to mount to the desktop. I don't know why I didn't see that behavior in the Orb or the Jazz Drive with that adapter. I have a couple of older versions of Mac OS X virtualized, 10.12 uh, and 10.5, and it's the same thing on those. But I also have Windows virtualized. I have Windows 7 and Windows 10, and it shows up right away on the same host computer in Windows and I plug this into my Blu-ray player and my smart TV and it shows up right away there so I don't know what's going on why Mac OS 10 has so much trouble with it but its derivatives in the iOS 
apparently have that same three minute and 30 second issue. So it's very bizarre, but I'm not gonna make you wait through the whole thing. So we'll just skip ahead. And there it is. Despite the long wait, it's fully functional once it shows up. I've got some pictures on here. This is surprisingly more responsive than the uh, Orb and the Jazz was. It's a little hard sometimes to touch things with the, in this dock, but let's see if we can... You'll forgive me if I have to touch everything twice. We'll let this song cache for a few seconds. I love how you can see the hard drive light on. It's definitely more responsive than the other SCSI drives were, which is kind of interesting. Let's go into my phone and we'll get the um, owner's manual and we'll copy it down to the HD20SC. So you have full right access as well. A little red light comes on, I love that. All right, very responsive. Let's go back here to the HD20SC and we'll pull up owner's guide PDF. Yeah, very nice. I think you guys can see and read that, but or not read that, but see that. But anyway, I love how it mentions in here that this is for under the introduction here, it mentions that this is for any Macintosh with a SCSI port like the Mac Plus or an Apple II computer with the SCSI card. Well, now we know it works with the iPhone as well, so maybe I'll email Apple and see if they'll update their documentation. One last thing before the end of the video, let's take a little trip up to my office. There's one last thing I want to show you. I felt it would be remiss if I didn't also show you the HD20SC working on my iMac. Because even if Apple had never included external storage support into iOS 13, I still would have done a video on just getting this 34-year-old hard drive attached to a modern iMac running 1015 Catalina. That alone is really cool. So I just wanted to show it off, mount it on the desktop, and everything works as you'd expect. Copy files to it. And I just alone think this is really cool. I think the only thing visually that might be cooler is to have one of those shiny new Mac Pros and attach the HD20SC to that, but I don't have enough money for one of those, so this will have to do. I really hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. I'm going to have some more SCSI One devices next, as well as uh, some contemporary items I have on the agenda as well. So there's plenty more in the coming year to watch, but that's all for now. Thank you.